Welcome back artists. We've been working for a while now on taking circles, making them look like spheres, turning them into all sorts of basketballs, tennis balls, whatever sports you can think of. So we're going to continue down that road today and we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So obviously we're working with lines. We connect lines together to make shapes. In this event, in this series, we're basically using circles because we're trying to make things look like spheres. We'll get to the football in just a minute, which obviously isn't a sphere, but then we're going to take those circles and again, actually make them look like spheres, right? So our goal is to go from shape, which looks flat, to form. So I've already given some advice on how to do this. We've done our level one and our level two. There's my level three tennis ball that's actually looking like a form, like a sphere, right? We got our baseball right there actually looking kind of like a sphere. We've got our basketball looking actually kind of like a sphere right here. So our goal is to keep, keep rolling on this. Today we're going to work with the soccer ball. So like I said, we're just going to get right to it. So one of the things about what we've got so far here, my kind of level one soccer ball was basically just little spots that were connected with lines. Yeah, if you're just starting out, that's probably a good way. I think people would understand that that's a soccer ball. Level two, I showed you how you can do kind of a series of interconnected uh, hexagons, six-sided shapes. And that gets you closer, but an actual soccer ball is going to be a combination of hexagons, which have six sides, and pentagons, which have five. So I'm going to try to actually create that pattern for my final sketch here of a soccer ball today. So let's see what we can do with it. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I've already sketched out everything, my little shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find kind of the middle and just make a little mark there because everything I make today, if it would be a straight line in real life, well, since this is a round object, I'm going to try to make that round so it's basically curving away from the middle. So having that middle point there hopefully is going to help us out. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said, this one right here, I've just kind of done a series of hexagons, six-sided shapes. We want to start the, the black shapes are actually pentagons on a real soccer ball. So it's a five-sided shape. So I'm going to start and see if I can get something close to resembling a pentagon. I'm going to put it kind of near the center. So if we think of a pentagon, well, first of all, I'm going to use the back of this. The basic shape of a pentagon, you just want five sides, right? So if I imagine connecting something that looks like a house with a little roof on it, well, that's a pentagon. It has five sides. Clearly, it's a pentagon. If you're trying to make like home plate in baseball, that's the style of pentagon you'd want, right? What we want is what we call in math a regular pentagon. Now, this is not a regular pentagon. This is not a regular pentagon. When you talk about a regular polygon, a regular pentagon, a regular hexagon, in math, all that means is that all of the sides and all of the angles are going to be the same. And that regular pentagon is what we're going to see on a soccer ball. So sketching this out is a little tricky, but we'll get started and see what we can come up with. My goal is I'm trying to make all five sides roughly the same length and roughly the same angle. So something like that is at least close to a regular pentagon. But when you turn it, you can see how that, side, that it looks different that way than it did the other way. So a true regular pentagon, no matter how you turn it, would look exactly the same. Now that's hard to sketch by hand. We're going to try, but again, it's not going to be perfect. Perfection does not exist in art, but we're going to try. We're going to do the best we can. So let's see. I'm going to start here and maybe have... And you know what? I'm going, to go, I'm going to go pretty big with this, actually. So... Straight lines. And even as you're drawing a way you can do it is... You kind of turn your paper around to try to see it from different viewpoints. That can help. It's a tricky thing just by hand to sketch a regular pentagon, or really any regular polygon, other than like a regular quadrilateral, 
which we would know as a square. That's decently easy. But any other regular polygon is going to be a little bit tricky to sketch out. That's close-ish. I think I'm going to call that okay. Now, remember, I had this little dot right here, and I said everything is going to bend away from that dot, right? So right now I've got straight lines, but straight lines kill the illusion of this being a sphere because a sphere wouldn't have straight lines on it. Everything would be curved. So let's see what we can do. Please now, please wait. My phone's freaking out, sorry. <laughs> so um, here's what we need to do. Everything is going to curve. Let me turn this off. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Everything's going to curve away from the middle. And those curves are going to, they're going to become more noticeable the closer to the edge. So anything closer to the middle is going to be closer to straight. Anything closer to the edge is going to be more like a curve in theory. So all I'm going to do is very slightly have these lines curving outward just a little bit. You really don't want to go crazy with this effect, but having it curve at all is going to make it look more like it's actually round. So you can see I slightly curved those lines outward. Okay. Now the other thing, one good thing I actually did on the level one here is you notice that there's like a circle here. All of these lines, which again, all the lines on a soccer ball technically are straight if you look at them head on. But again, they look curved because they're further away from the middle. So adding kind of a big circular shape was a pretty good way of doing business. So if I want to have this kind of circular shape, it really should move around this first little pentagon that I've drawn. Now, I don't know exactly how big to make it, and I'm definitely sketching this because I want this really gentle. So again, full disclosure here, I've never actually tried to sketch a realistic Soccer ball, most of the time in class, if students ask, I'll show them this type of thing because it gets you it gets you close enough. But uh, we're trying to make this one look realistic. So well, let's let's see what we can do with it. I'm probably going to end up erasing a whole lot. So I'm going to sketch as lightly as I can. OK, so here's my Pentagon. Everything else here is going to basically end up being a hexagon, right? So. Let's see. I'll start with straight-ish lines, and then I'll go back and add some curve to them. OK. So I've started with kind of little arms reaching out on each of those five points of my pentagon. Now a hexagon, again, just like I drew here. Hexagon's gonna have six sides. It's a lot easier to draw a regular hexagon than it is to draw a regular pentagon because, <sighs> excuse me. As long as I make sure, again, if I think about it, I'm starting the same way, like I'm drawing a little house. Only the bottom is actually gonna have a little area down here too. So as long as I make these two, pretty close to the same size. So this is close to the same size as this is close to the same size as this is close to the same size as this. And there you go. It's close enough. I won't make the bad joke again that it's close enough to play ball. Oops, I made it again. Anyway, it's not a perfectly regular hexagon but it does the job, right? So let's see if we can get something like that going on here. So what I'm gonna need, and again, I'll go back and kind of curve these a little bit, but first we need to get those basic shapes in there. And hopefully, the empty leftover space is gonna be something like a pentagon. Now, I don't know how well this is going to work. We're going to have to see. So it looks like my empty leftover space is a lot bigger 
than my space here, right? If I look at the angles here, the top of this pentagon is about like that. But the angle of this part, which that's going to be part of my pentagon, is much wider now. I want it to be a little bit more narrow, more like that. So, hey, again, I'm learning as I go here. We're going to have to see what we can do about that. And I might have needed to make my... Uh, I might have needed to make my hexagons a little bit bigger. I'm really not sure. Hopefully I don't have to erase over and over and over. I guess down here where it goes off the edge, we don't super have to worry about it that much, do we? It's mainly this guy that I want to get looking right. And that would cut off maybe around there. Again, I'm going to try to make this look a little bit more curvy in just a minute. Then what happens here? See, that doesn't look right because there's that huge space. How are we going to figure this out? Hmm. Maybe I made everything too small to start with. Maybe I made everything too small to start with. Uh-oh. Like I said, this is tricky, isn't it? If I widen that up, maybe they get wider the closer they are to the top. I don't know. This is tricky. This is tricky. Well, what we have looks close to a soccer ball. So I'll tell you what, you know what we're about to do? We're going to cheat. We're just going to make the whole thing smaller so I don't have to worry about these weird edges. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the entire sphere and I'm just going to make the whole thing smaller so you don't see as much of it. <laughs> and then we're just going to kind of fudge it until it looks close enough. <laughs> Is it cheating? Are there rules? Are there rules in art? I don't know. What I do know is I got a bunch of erase lines. So we're going to have to take care of that in a minute. Okay. So the only thing now that's looking really off is this space is way too big. So let's go back and kind of edit that space a little bit. And then we'll see what the real deal is. So we need to have this guy stretching out a little higher. And go kind of this way, which means this can go this way. But that's still not looking like a pentagon. That's looking like another hexagon. This is one of those things. <laughs> You were doing this on a computer, like using a 3D animation program. In theory, it'd be so much easier to wrap the texture map around. Other than that does introduce a whole other. OK, sorry, I'm <laughs> rambling about computer animation. So this is looking pretty close, I think. I do want to go back and make some of these things a little curvier. Um, the main thing is this. I'm still not liking that. I think maybe we just need to make this stretch out a little more. Maybe like that. The problem is these other pentagons are way bigger than the than the original one in the middle. So maybe I'll try to widen that out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Make it match more. Now, the reason I can only do it a little bit is because, again, that's changing the shape of my hexagons, too. This is the one I've been dreading doing was the soccer ball. Hopefully the football is going to be easy compared to this. Okay. So let's kind of curve. There's our middle point. So all this stuff is going to curve away. All right. 
I need to clean this up. This is this is getting messy over here. This is getting messy. So I'm gonna erase out most of what I have. Now I'll still be able to see it. This I like this. I like what's happening right now because I think a lot of the times, like in art class, you don't necessarily get to see me work through something. Like I just have the answer. A lot of the times. I know a lot of times I probably don't. But uh, this is, you know, artists have to go back and, and work through things and figure them out. Now, actually, immediately once I erased, all of that kind of seems to look a little bit better immediately to me. So what are we going to do? We're going to make those lines a little curvier, like they're bending around the sphere. And then we're going to uh, see if we can finish this thing up. So... Let's get started. And actually, that looks close ish to a regular hexagon. So maybe we weren't horribly far off. Oh, there we go. That's going to curve that way. Okay. All right, so we got at least one. And again, all those lines are curved, but we're still going to call that a hexagon. Maybe curving these lines out a little bit is going to help the whole thing look more round, hopefully. Hopefully. There's a little pentagon, so that would be one of the black spots. These bigger ones would be one of the white spots. I think that needs to be a little longer. Black, black. This should be... One of those black spots as well that I'm working on right here. Pop, pop, pop. Would this be? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This would be here, that little corner would be. <sighs> Shape wise, it looks close. It looks like a soccer ball ish. I think that's as good as we're going to get is ish. And you know what? Sometimes that's going to be as good as you get. No, that looks like a soccer ball. Okay. So we've got our kind of basic shapes there. It looks decently round, I guess. Once we have our shadow and everything, I think it'll work itself out a little better. All right. Close enough. Let's start figuring out color. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, and again, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to try to kind of shade the entire thing. Since most of it's white, I'm going to try to shade the whole thing kind of with my pencil. And then I'm going to go back and attempt to kind of shade each little spot to give it a little bit of kind of texture. And then I'll go back and add the black spots with a black colored pencil. And hopefully even on those, I'll get a little touch of shading happening. So let's do it. So I'm going to draw right through my lines for the shading. And I'm going to assume that it'll blend out just fine. And again, those black spots, I'm going to go back with black. But since most of it is white, I'm going to shade with my regular pencil. Same way we've been doing with all the rest of this kind of sports series. My light source is up here. My shadow is down here. 
And again, since I'm going to smear my graphite, it doesn't need to be totally perfect to start with. Now the problem is I might end up, that graphite that's down on the lines might make a huge mess when I smear it. It probably will. It probably will. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how, how big of a mess it makes. It will make a mess. How big of a mess will it, will it make? Will it ruin everything? Let's find out. So, blending. Just using my finger to blend that out. Doesn't look perfect, but hopefully we're getting a starting point. I'm going to go all the way around here. I probably blended a little too much into that spot. That spot should be a little lighter. It gets tricky to try to erase it out because then you got to blend it a little back in or it looks really unnatural. So let's see if we can get just a little bit. All right. <laughs> That's our starting point. See, you know what's starting to look really good? <laughs> That's starting to look pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> starting to look just fine. All right, I'm going to erase out. Anytime you do blending with your finger, you get tons of gray where you didn't want it. Let's go erase back out that gray. Okay. Okay. And we're going to call that a starting point. I'm going to erase out a little bit here. I think that's a little heavy handed. A little too much going on right there. Just a bit. Just a bit. Actually, even some of these lines I can erase out a little bit. Because we don't necessarily need to see them that intensely. We'll still be able to see them. We'll add some shading. So I'm erasing out where my light would be kind of hitting the most. And of course, anytime you erase out anything as such, you got to give it a little bit more of a blend. It's a constant back and forth, isn't it? Okay. The simplest question, you raise your hand and go, hey, <laughs> how do I draw a soccer ball? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's actually a pretty complicated answer, isn't it? If you want it to look real who knows if it does or not all right i'm going to start shading gently with the black just to kind of show where these spots will be again i'm going to do this relatively gently it's still going to be darker than my regular pencil but this will at least give kind of a base tone to the pentagons the pentagons five-sided parts that ought to be black this will help us kind of see what we need to do hopefully Hopefully it'll give us some direction. Okay. Again, I'm not pushing super hard on this. It's similar to how I always start, because you can always make it darker. It's much harder to make it lighter. That's why I just had to erase out a bunch of graphite, because I needed to make it lighter. Again, going back over spots, it's not going to make it any darker unless I'm pushing harder. All it's going to do is fill in those white spots. All right, so that's a pentagon. That's black. Cool. So that means this over here should be a pentagon too. I think. So that'll be black. Okay. This tiny little guy right here should be a pentagon. That'll be black. Okay. I think this tiny little guy right here is supposed to be a pentagon. I believe the pattern is like you got one pentagon surrounded by five hexagons, and then on the outside of those hexagons is going to be another pentagon. I believe that's the pattern. 
But again, I don't like have a soccer ball at home. I'm I'm like ninety percent sure. I I could look it up. I'm pretty sure this is how it goes. <laughs> I probably should, I probably should have looked it up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's starting to it's starting to be a soccer thing. All right. So that would mean this big one must be a pentagon as well. So how would this is going to be something like that? That. Again, going super gently right now. See, but what I don't like, that one looks so much bigger than this. How's that a thing? I'm going to go back and make this one just a little bit bigger. Just for the sake of trying to make a match a little bit. I just got to make sure as I make it bigger, it still connects to those lines. Closer, <laughs> closer, and then this guy up here I think would be the last, the last black one, so the last pentagon. Okay, so we're at the point where I think anyone looking at this would definitely know it's a soccer ball. Let's see what we can do to make it a little rounder. And that's going to involve some shading on each little part. And that's also going to involve me, of course, going back and using that black color pencil to actually add some shading to. I feel like so far we've got too much of this gray smudge all over the place. So I think I need to go back and erase some more of that out. Unfortunately, which is going to start the whole process of erase a little bit, smudge a little bit, erase a little bit, smudge a little bit. But I think there's just a little too much of that to start with. So let's erase some of that out. I think by the time I'm down here, it should be kind of nice dark shadow. So that's all right. But let's get rid of some of this. See if we can blend the rest of that out. <laughs> you ever, and I know the answer is yes, before I even ask the question, I know the answer is yes. You ever, you're working on some art and you just, it starts kind of getting frustrating. Mm hmm You know what I'm talking about. But remember, you always have a choice. You keep going or you give up. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Okay. So next, before I really accent those dark parts and make them actually nice and dark, what I'm going to try to do is add a little touch of shading kind of inside each of these little um, white hexagons here. Again, I say they're white hexagons, but in practice, they look more grayish which is fine. So like right here at the bottom of this one, for example, since it's down, again, my light source is here, my shadow's down here. In case you forgot, that's my shadow. There it is. So my light source is kind of here-ish, my shadow's down here-ish. Again, that means this is probably too dark over here. It's getting a little better. It's getting a little better. It's getting a little better. Okay. So on each of these little white bits, 
I'm going to add down toward the shadowed side just a little tiny touch of shadow. I'm going to try to do this without blending it with my finger because if I blend it with my finger, it's just going to get all smudgy again. So at this point, I'm going to try to do this without blending over the whole thing again. I might blend a little bit in each one, but I'm definitely not going to try to blend the entire thing again at this point. So. Something like that. Probably not quite enough, but we'll see. I'm going to go as gentle as I can right here. Cool. And again, all I'm trying to do is define these lines using shadow, shading, instead of using just here's a line. Because if you just have here's a line, it's white on one side of the line, it's white on the other side of the line, it's not going to look 3D. On an actual soccer ball, you know, that, you'd have texture to these little parts. So by adding a little bit of shadow where each of those little parts is attached and stitched together, it makes it look, each little piece look a little bit three-dimensional. That's my goal here. Are we going to achieve that goal? We'll see. Something like that. And very gently blend that out. Do not want everything to turn gray. Hey, that's not bad. That is not bad. kind of working who would have thought it's kind of working maybe up here I'll do just a little bit like a shadow where it's going around to the back a little bit something again I'm gonna go black go back and hit the black parts again um, to make them really dark I just wanted to kind of see where they were before I tried getting the white parts in so I feel like up here would not be anywhere near this dark. So let's erase out some of that. But it's going to fade to get darker as we come around. Actually, that's not too bad as is. I don't know that I need to super touch that. Okay. It's start you see what I mean? It's starting to look kind of dimensional. It's starting to look... Yeah. This is all right. It's turning out okay. It's turning out okay. Who would have thought? Now, as I move down to this corner, I'm going to want everything to generally just kind of be darker. So I'm going to keep kind of repeating the same thing here. All of this is going to be pretty dark down here. That's going to be pretty dark right here. This is going to be pretty dark. This line. And again, we'll get more contrast in a minute when we make those black spots darker. It's all right. And this guy right here maybe is showing a little too much. Soften that up slightly. Slightly. Okay, I'm starting to believe this might look good. Once we, uh, once we get those pentagons blacker, I think, I think we might be in business. Who would have ever thought? After all this, on that, it's coming along. It's happening. It's happening. So let's have a little bit of shadow down here. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go back with the color pencil and make those black parts darker. So. I'm going to try to make them, obviously it's all going to be darker, but I'm going to try to make them the darkest where the darkest shadow would be, of course. So we'll start kind of over here. Again, I want, I want these shapes to stand out, so I'll start maybe by kind of redefining them. 
And then the only way to get this really dark, I'm, I'm going to bear down for the parts that should be really dark. I'm going to bear down pretty hard on the pencil. So that's about as dark as I can get it, at least with this black colored pencil. And then the rest I'm going to still have a little darker. I want the whole thing to generally be darker than the white parts. I may have pushed down too hard when I went around that, went around that outline. Probably did. Probably pushed down too hard when I went around the outline, but it's okay. It's okay. See if I can blend that in a little bit. Okay. So this guy down here, this is just darkness. It's on the shadow. It's curving around the outside edge of the ball. This is just as dark as I can get it. Same thing with this guy down here. And also this is helping, once we get those darker blacks in, it helps the white parts look more like white and look less like gray, right? So this is helping with everything, adding the contrast. Make this a little darker right around the very edge, but this one is not going to be as dark as the other ones. Okay, we can still tell it's supposed to be black, right? Okay, let's move up to this guy right here. Now, since this is at the very top near the light source, I really don't want this one to be super, super dark. Let's go kind of gentle with it. I want it to be darker than it was, but not super deep black. Okay. <laughs> Not sure about the shape of that, but whatever. I think I messed the shape of that up a little bit. It's okay. And of course, last we have this, this guy right in the middle. Losing a little bit of my roundness here, so can get some of that back. Like it's got a flat spot right there. <laughs> okay. Oh, middle guy. Middle guy. Coming back to that one, it's not really fading the way I want it to. All right, middle guy, here we go. Middle guy. Let's not go crazy and ruin it. Not yet, we'll ruin it later. I'm not ready to ruin it yet. <laughs> uh. That's the difference between like a pro artist and an amateur artist. The pro artist knows exactly when to ruin their artwork. You got to ruin it at the right time, folks. Important. It's important. I, sh I like that shape better. I think I just made that shape look a little better. Good work. So again, we'll get kind of a nice little base coat where it's not too dark. And then we'll go back and bring out some darker spots on this guy. Medium pressure right now, just kind of filling, 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 filling. 
not going to get any darker. It's just going to fill in more of those white spaces. Okay. So, I guess if our shading is down here, we probably want maybe this part to be the darkest. We'll go back and start hitting that harder. And as we move toward the other end, we'll see if we can lighten it up a little bit. Another thing, I feel like soccer balls are kind of plasticky, so maybe adding like some little shines or something to it would help. Guess I'm way beyond that though. All right, that fades a little bit. It's hard to see with the light shining off of it. There you go. Got a little bit of a fade there. Try to blend that in a little more. Okay. I'm about ready to. I'm about ready to stop working on this. Um, or at least start working on the background. I'm ready to call this thing done. Uh, but it's not done. I need a little bit more contrast down here in my, uh, even though they're white and not, you know, black, I do need a little bit more contrast at this point down in my little hexagons here. So we'll go back. We'll add a little bit more. Not going to go crazy with it, but a little bit more contrast just to make those hexagons stand out a little more. Just that little bit, I think, helped, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Just that little bit. Yep, that's plenty. That's plenty. Okay. Go a little bit more down here where it should be darker, and we're going to call it done. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Again, this is my shadow down here, so I need to get a decent, decent bit of that darkness, especially down here on the far side. Mm -hmm. Except for I smudged too much here, and I have to play the go back and smudge last game, and then. Blend it out. <laughs> uh, the joy of working with graphite. There you go. Yep. Actually, I made a joke earlier about <laughs> knowing the right time to ruin it. A real thing in art um, is knowing like the right time to stop. That's definitely a thing that artists need to master. And I think right now, for now, I might go back and add more to that later. But right now, I'm doing all right with that. I am not dissatisfied with that. <clears throat> I think it looks okay. So maybe now I can actually start working on the background a little bit. I think that'll be a welcome uh, change at this point. So, yeah. I'm thinking what I'll do for the background here is uh, maybe some blue and purple for the sky, some green for the grass. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm all right with it. It's nice every now and then to be all right with a thing. Cool. Hmm. All right. I've been working on this for like 40 minutes. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Why not? Let's go ahead and add in some 
some sky here. Again, this is going to be nice. The color, I think, is going to help this guy because so much of it is white, right? That right now, there's not a whole ton of contrast between the white and the gray and the black. I think some color in the background is going to help that out a lot. So let's do it. We're going to start with this lighter, lighter color of blue. We're going to fade into maybe a darker color of blue. We're going to fade into maybe a purple. That's my plan anyway, and we'll see how it goes. So as I move up, just pressing gentler to kind of give it some room to breathe. Because I'm going to fade that into a deeper blue in just a minute. Already, ooh, already that color gives it a nice little pop. I think I erased out my line over here, so let's see, where would that be? Maybe about there. Ish. It's tilted. <laughs> Maybe about there ish. How about that? Yeah. And again, this will also be nice because the color will define, you know, where is the sky, where is the ball, and that's what we want. I am probably going to get some of those since I erased and made my ball smaller at the beginning of the artwork. I'm probably going to get some of those nice erase marks that we're all such big fans of. We'll see. Maybe I won't. See how that one looks good and this one looks terrible? Because this one is blending better. It's gradient. In other words, it's fading. This one over here, not fading so much. Let's get it to fade a little more. Anytime you're trying to make something fade, just as you move, you're going to press more and more gently until you're barely pressing at all. You'll get a nice blend of value. And as we know, value is what makes our artwork look dimensional. It gives it contrast. It makes it pop. Cool. Maybe I'll start blending in my deeper blue at this point. This pencil's too sharp. If pencils are really sharp, you're going to get like really distinct lines. And... As you work, those lines will change. So I want to start with one that's a little bit duller. That was like fresh out of the box sharp. So All right. we're going to blend in some darker blues here. So now all I want is to get a fade between this deeper blue and the lighter blue. Which you can see right now I do not have at all. We'll get there. We'll get there. At this point, doing stuff like this is very relaxing to me <laughs> after working on that form of that ball so much. This, this type of thing is easy going. Nice and gentle and low stress. So we'll let that blend down into here. As I move into that lighter blue color, I'm just pressing my darker blue color less and less hard. Get that blend. Looks pretty good on that side, ish. Looks at least decent on that side. Let's get it looking decent on this side.
And again, the reason I can keep working on this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that is just because I am pressing incredibly gently. If I was pressing hard here, I'd go over it once and it would look terrible. So again, one of the artist's best kind of tools for getting blends of color is to be able to control your pressure, to be able to push down light and medium and gentle and hard, all those different things in different scenarios when you need them. I feel like it's, yeah, see how it's darker on this side, lower down? So that means I need to push down a little harder, lower down on this side, get it to blend. And then maybe really gentle. Cool. Hmm. Should we add purple at the top or should we just let it ride? I don't know. Uh-oh. You can tell my hand's getting tired. Let's go for a little purple. Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> We're what? We're like an hour into this thing. Why not? Give my hand a little break for a second while I get my purple ready. Also, since I'm going green with the ground, again, I think I talked about this earlier. I really like the way green and purple look together. So it'll probably, probably help. Again, just getting my purple so it's not super, super pointy sharp. Okay. Here we go. Purple time. And actually, this purple, it is regular violet purple. But it's pretty similar looking to that blue, honestly. So. It shouldn't be a huge deal to get these fading well together. They're pretty similar in color. I'm going lighter with the purple down toward the blue, and then I'll pull the blue back up into the purple over top of that as it kind of fades in. Again, right now, doesn't look too good because there's that light spot in between the purple and blue. Did that on purpose, though, so I can go back with my blue and help blend that blue into the purple. I had a plan. We'll see if the plan worked. Seems like it. Seems like it worked out fine. Hey, that's starting to look pretty good. Now I wonder how long I've been working on this sky for. And again, this is a teeny tiny little artwork. So this just, it really goes to show. The amount of time you invest in something has a big, big difference on the way it turns out. You want to make good stuff, you got to put some time into it. Which is another thing I like about doing this style of video is, again, you can't sit and actually see in class how long this would take because class isn't even an hour long, you know? I Most of the time when I show you this type of stuff, in art class i'm showing y'all like you know 30 times fast forward so you can see this whole process take place you know in like a minute or two 
Yeah, in real life, guys, it doesn't take a minute or two. In real life, it takes a while. I like it. I like it. Let's get a little bit more of this darker blue around here to define the edge of that ball. Maybe a little bit more of that lighter blue in there, too, to help with that. Ooh. I want you to really be able to tell where the edge of that ball is. I don't want it looking fuzzy. I want it looking distinct. Yep. Okay. Shall we add some grass? Oh man, I forgot. <laughs> I was gonna do the sky for this one like a sunset. I even had like my colors ready over here. Whatever. For my that would that would have looked nice too with the red and orange. Like I said, I like the look of uh, purple and green anyhow. So I th I'm thinking for this, I want to add a little bit of texture to it. So I'm going to go with kind of a basic coat of this light green first. And then I'm going to kind of make my shadow stand back out a little bit. And then I'm going to add some, uh, some little texture using a darker color of green. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's do it. Again, I'm going to bring that shadow back out in just a minute. So I'm not super concerned with that right now. We'll go back over it. Probably use some black on that to make it really stand out. Okay, and I'm thinking as I come down toward the bottom, I'll use more of a darker green, and then maybe I'll add some texture with that uh, darker green. And that'll really be the point where we start to see if we're ruining it or not. And we might, we might. All right. Or, or should I not, should I not blend that into a darker green? Maybe I should just use the darker green just for the texture. Let's do both. We'll blend it into darker green and then we'll uh, add some texture with that darker green too. Okay. Here we go. Basically the same thing I did with the purple at the top where it faded down into the blue. I'm gonna do with this darker green at the bottom and it's gonna fade up into the lighter green. Maybe. And we'll probably add some of that darker green in around the shadow area. And definitely add some black around there too. And I'm not sure how concerned I am with getting everything totally perfect on this one. Because like I said, I'm going to go back, I think, and try to add some grassy texture to this too. You know, so it looks like the ball sitting on grass instead of on like green carpet or something.
<sighs> on one of them. I don't remember. It might have been on the baseball and the basketball one. I didn't show the process that I used to make the background, so I figured on this one, why not? You don't want to see it? You turn it off. Who cares? <laughs> but if I'm going to do it, may as well record it and you can see what I was doing. Although I'm sure you could have just guessed as well. Normally you look at something you can kind of figure out how, how it was made, right? But not always. And sometimes seeing the process helps. For sure. Alright, so we're going to go back. We're going to add some, uh, some texture to that. All in all, it looks like a soccer ball, right? Yes, it does. So let's do some, uh, some of the shadow business over here. gonna add some of that black in there too to really get a nice nice dark value down here might add some of that darker green around the shadow that's helping a lot isn't it sure is sure is helps ground the ball everything looks just like we want it to look. See if it's too bad blended into more of a gray here. Um, maybe we'll add some more of that darker green. All right, let's run it with some texture. I feel like if I, if I add enough of these little guys, maybe it'll look like grass. Maybe it'll ruin it. Who knows? Let's try it out. I know if I am going to try that, I should make them really short near the top. And maybe I'll do them a little lighter. I'm using that lighter green at this point. It might be looking grassy. Now, as I come lower, I'm going to make each of these marks a little bit longer. And ultimately, I'm going to use that darker green to kind of fill them in a little bit too. Now, the reason I'm turning it upside down for this is when I first start each little stripe, if you think about grass, it gets thinner as it goes up. So it's much easier for me to do a line coming down toward me than one going up like that. It's just the way my hand wants to work. Like I always say, don't fight with your materials. Okay. Looks kind of grassy-ish. All right, let's, uh, let's get that darker one and add some color pieces down toward the bottom. Now, at first, this is going to look terrible, right? It always will. You got to go back and add like a whole lot to get a half decent look. Again, making them smaller and smaller as we get toward the top here. I think it looks kind of grassy. Maybe I'll do a couple that kind of overlap the, the, bot the very bottom part of the soccer ball here. Yeah, the sides look okay. It's just the bottom that looks terrible because I need way more. So let's add way more. Way more. Not getting afraid here to have them kind of dark. Not being afraid to let them kind of cover up a little bit of the bottom of the ball. Uh, 
not being afraid to have some going right through the shadow. Maybe, maybe I should add a little bit of shadowed ones too. I don't know. Is that weird? Does that make it look strange? Hard to say. Seems like it helped, in my opinion. Again, the bottom, the sides of this are still looking pretty good. The bottom, mm -mm. the bottom, it is not happening on right now because I need more. I need more. Again, up here, they're going to be a little smaller. Yeah, all right, so let's get this bottom up and running for real. At this point, to get them darker, I'm actually turning my pencil as I go because parts of it are, as you color, like the pencil kind of sharpens itself because part of it gets flat. So if I turn my pencil different ways, it'll give me those, kind of like I didn't want a minute ago, it'll give me some of those nicer, darker lines as well. Really dark over here, not so dark over here. Let's add some more. Okay. I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close. I think we're getting real close. I think we're going to be done with this thing in about 10 seconds. Because I think I'm about done with this thing. If you know what I mean. It's so it's so it's so much darker over here. That looks pretty good though. All right, I think we're gonna call it. I think it's done. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Soccer, level three, completed. It's a soccer ball. <laughs> All right, one more, one more. We're gonna do a football and, uh, and then we're done with this sports series which I'm excited about the idea of being done. It's cool. You know what though? Ooh, no, I should leave it alone. It is time to stop. Know when to stop. I'm stopping right now. That's it. So anyway, yeah. Uh, see you next time. Um, I'm still working on my little, uh, this little guy. I'm going to get, uh, going to get some color on that probably at some point in the next day or so. So we'll talk about that. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole ton of paint here. And what I do have is acrylic paint. I wish I had some watercolors or something, but so we'll, we'll see about that. I don't have a whole ton of thick painting paper here either. So probably a lot of crayons, um, colored pencils, things like that. We'll see. I, I, I'm going to try to do a little bit of painting. If y'all have anything that like, um, oh, hey, how do I draw this? How do I draw this? How do I draw this? Um, have your parents email me or something like that and I'll see if I can do some quick like tutorial things quick not spending an hour drawing a soccer ball so that might be fun um, anyway stay busy stay creative uh, stay away from <laughs> big groups of people um, take care of yourselves have fun be safe see you next time later <laughs>